10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Uh oh. <laughs> I hear bells tolling. Do you hear that? Do you hear that, everybody? All right, welcome back to For Whom the Bell Tolls. We are on episode number seven, unbelievably enough. I want to thank everybody who's joining us here for the live stream, and I especially want to thank everybody who's watching us later on replay. Please do leave a comment if you're on replay so I know when you watched it, where you watched it from. It will help inform the regularity of this stream. It'll help me figure out some different time slots occasionally to try to get as many of you guys from the Belltube community within the mix. And if you're totally new here, completely Welcome to the nonsense that is Belltube. I am very, very happy tonight to be joined by a guest that I've watched on YouTube for quite some time. I'm going to guess about three-ish years or so, probably. And that is the host, the captain, the chairman of the board, the king <laughs> of sometimes DNF. We'll get into that a little bit. But my friend Andrew from Andrew's Wizardly Reads. Andrew, how's it going tonight? It, it's going good. It's going good. Um, yeah, I'm excited. For, I've been looking forward to this for quite a while now. We've had this in the work for going on about a month. I think so. You know, I waited patiently for your invitation to come on your channel as long as I could. And then I was like, no, you know, I think I just need to get him in the hot seat. Yeah, nah, it, it, it'll come. It'll come eventually. You uh, guys. I've been, on, I've been on hiatus. You guys, I'm kidding. One thing <laughs> that you're going to find out tonight about Andrew and I's relationship is I joke with him constantly. Um, <laughs> he's the fun younger brother I've never had. He's got oh. really cool, you know, content on his channel but i've got you know as usual you guys i did prepare i've got about two and a half pages of questions so we're gonna we're gonna deep dive with andrew's wizardly reads tonight but before we do that i do want to recognize some people who've joined us here in the chat christopher says he is looking forward to this one so um, brand right here Ooh. He's got books. One of the coolest things about Andrew is the guy's got like, he's like the six gun shooter of books, right? It's like whatever you need. He's like, boom, boom, ba, 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 pulls the books right up. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. I know this gal pretty, pretty well. I believe Andrew great. does too. Tori, welcome oh, in. Bestie. Oh, she's the best. No she's doubt. Amazing. Heidi, Andrew, give Brian more books to read that you DNF'd. Well, <laughs> we'll talk about a little bit of that tonight. Oh, gosh. Sir Beth, this is going to be wild. Well, I got my, I've got my water, so should be going crazy. Shad's here again. You know these people have way too much confidence in us, Andrew. We've had two people in a row saying this is going to be great, and one in the middle saying it's going to be wild. I mean, I have been known to be wild on live streams. That's awesome. Hello, <laughs> gentlemen and chat. This is from D and D. I got a shout out. Uh, it's apparently National Poetry Month. I think I don't know if that's a thing in America, but it is in the UK. And she composed a poem today on her channel and was kind enough to include me in the poem, which I did not expect. And that was just super, super cool. Um, where are we here? The doctor himself, Dr. Strange. No, Dr. Philip Chase is No, his I think name. you had it right the first time. Dr. Strange? <laughs> Phil's Philip, amazing. Philip, are you the master of the mystic arts when you're not teaching English, possibly? I don't know. Beltubians, I didn't even notice that. Oh, my God, you guys, we might have a new name. Well, that that could be. That could be the, the community the name. powers in the tweed. It, it, it could be. Um, here's somebody that says, I need to read The Wandering In. We're going to talk about that tonight. Another of the most lovely people that I know on all of BookTube, my favorite person from New Zealand forever, Derry is here. And look at this. I never realized Andrew was so pale. Now, if if Matt is calling you pale. I am. I'm actually coming out of winter. I'm always pretty pale. But right now, like my webcam gets horrible lighting. So. Well, well, it, it, you know, it, it's, I think he's mad. I think he's doing it for me. So I look good. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Look, no. look at, look at this thing. Okay. I need all the help I can get. You run a bar for 15 years and tell me how you come out looking. Right. Look we got, I can, I can spotlight your channel. That is awesome. Uh, we've got a couple of cool things. Britain's here did not DNF this chat. That's excellent. That one never gets old. 
Excellent. <laughs> strange, and, and here's Matt, and then we'll get into it. Strange doctor does not equal Dr. Strange. I think there's some transitive properties that I learned back in mathematics that might apply here. But since we have no mathematicians, Andrew, stop being mean to your forehead, according to Tori <laughs> as well. She wanted to emphasize that. So, yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Well, again, welcome in everybody. And I will try as like I said, this is only episode seven. I'm going to try to get to as many of you in the chat as I can. And I know as we go on, the chat actually gets bigger and bigger. That's what's been happening with this show. And we did start a little bit early tonight. So my first question to you, Andrew, is, you know, what were some of the first fantasy and sci-fi books that young Andrew read? Was it first fantasy or was it first sci-fi? Let's start there. Oh man, you're making me go back. Um, I would say, well, I did read the Magic Tree House as a kid. I read and the that, Giving Tree, but there was no Magic Tree House, just a magical happy it, it, tree. It's a series of children's books. Okay. Um, about a brother and a sister who have a magic tree house that is operated by Morgan Le Fay and Merlin um, in two different series. One is Morgan and the other is Merlin. But I would say probably around 10, it starts with The Hobbit, Ender's Game, Dragonlance, and then Wheel of Time, pretty much in that order. Wow. So th there's a couple of things to talk about there. So Dragonlance was one that I read probably, you know, I'm, I'm like at least a year older than you, possibly two, but who's counting? What I, I would say six months. See, it's probably been at about, about that range. I read Dragonlance at about the same time period of my life, too. And I remember thinking it was the coolest thing because a couple of years prior, I'd been in, introduced to Dungeons and Dragons by a family friend of mine. And here were some books that were, you know, written specifically in the D&D world. So yeah. I'm right with you there. That's a, that's an early start. I am, you know, I've not heard that anybody that I know has read Ender's Game that young. How did really? you come upon Ender's Game? Yeah. My uncle at my, my uncle is a a transient hippie. Okay. Uh, but he was also in the Navy. Uh, okay. He's, he's been everything. He's been a hypnotist. He's currently in his 50s. He's a skydiving instructor. He does everything. Uh, he was a blackjack dealer, stuff like that. I love this guy um, already. Say what? I love this guy already. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, my uncle's awesome. But yeah. when he was living with us, he lived with us for about a year. And he, one day I came in there and he was just like, Hey, I've got, I know you like reading. I've got this book that they made me read when I was in the Navy uh, here. I think you'd like it. And I read Ender's game. I read Ender's game so many times there used to be in high school, a, like they would try to motivate you to read. So you could like go to, into the library and take these quizzes on the computer. People would literally just buy me candy to go in and enter the questions in Ender's game. Cause I could get a hundred percent. Wow. Um, <laughs> on on I, the quizzes that they were. Yeah. Have. So, uh, so I, I read you, a lot of interesting. So, so you were getting a lot of candy at a young age then as well. Yes. You're you're yeah. winning several. Now, did the uncle hip teach you to hypnotize those children to give you candy? Or was no. this legitimately quiz work that you had accomplished? No, no, he, he did not hit teach me how to hypnotize. But that was in middle school. I I, I think I was reading Ender's game repeatedly through um through college i thought the, the movie was okay i saw the comment but the, yeah. the movie was okay yeah you know i don't even really remember the movie uh i and i and, and i remember the premise of the book i read it so long ago do you find mm -hmm. that happens to you do you have a good memory for books or is it sort because you read a tremendous amount of books do you do you find that it's kind of like you run out of hard drive space and something overwrites it, or do you have a pretty good memory for most of it? So fine details will fade over time, but structure and overall um, occurrences that happen within the book tend to stay with me. And the general feeling I had when reading the book will also stay with me, but actually like fine details. Right. Uh, I mean, even I could probably read the eye of the world again and it would feel fresh because it's been a couple of years. Right. Well, it would feel fresh, but it would be, I could enjoy it again because it's been a couple of years, but I still remember the broad strokes. So have you read that series? Obviously more than once then, because you know, you, you've, yeah. you've got, wow. <laughs> 
How do you, I have to ask because I remember finishing, I read the whole thing consecutively and I did it during the pandemic and it was like, it took me about four months and that's all I read was basically Wheel of Time. And I remember saying, I am never reading anything like this again for at least two years because I need to have, you know, a, a much shorter series. And that's sort of why I've only recently started Malazan is because I had about a two year hangover of that 14 book crunch that is the wheel of time. And maybe that's just the way I did it. I don't know. But what, what inspires somebody to go back and read a series that's four and a half million words? Well, so when I was reading it, you got to, you got to remember that I didn't have a car. The okay. internet was still the fastest you could get was broadband. Okay. Um, and uh, I, I had the series on my shelf. I, you know, you, you see all these shelves, I haven't always had these. These are within the last four years. Right. I, I had a like five by three foot shelf in my room and Wheel of Time was on that shelf. And so I, I wasn't I didn't do sports in school. I didn't do extracurricular activities in school. I would come home and either go hang out with friends, watch TV, play video games or read. Interesting. And if I couldn't go and buy new books because I didn't have a job at the time. Because I right. started reading Wheel of Time and I think I was 11 or 12. Jeez. Uh, it, that, that's all I really had. And so I, yeah. I consumed it so many times because it was there. Well, right. I mean, if you start that, you know, it's funny to me to think about that. Because if you read the Wheel of Time when you're 12, right, and you wait 10 years to go back to the series, you're still only 22 at that point, right? So, okay, now I'm I mean, starting... I've, I've no. read book one like nine times. I've read through oh my book God. 11 probably four or five times. Wow. Um, and then I've only, I think, read the last three twice. Well, I mean, while we're on the Wheel of Time, I mean, did you like the last three books? Yeah. You there's, did? there's a glaring error that bugs me. Okay. Um, it's just a transporting character who's in two places at once. Okay. And it, it, it's an editing issue. Sure. Um, and the fact that they didn't fix it or and or catch it kind of bugs me. But other than that, yeah, I liked it. I guess I'm a little surprised they didn't go back later and re-edit it. You know, especially with the with you know the TV show that's you know come out. I don't know. I guess maybe there's only a very small small percentage of people that would realize that. I know that's not something that I noticed. So maybe you have a fine eye for where those characters are supposed to be. I nitpick, and it. Okay. Drives some of my friends nuts. It's what leads to a lot of my DNFs. Okay. Uh, is I'm, I'm very, very cantankerous and picky about what I read. I understand. Uh, were you that way about video games as well? Um, I, That's a difficult question to answer because I don't know. Okay. Um, I, I don't notice. Did anybody ever throw a like controller that? at you? No, no. Nobody threw a controller at you. Okay. No. No, I've never, I've never gotten to fist fights or anything like that over video games. Um, but I do play Dark Souls, so I have thrown. Have a you? I was gonna say, if you've played Dark Souls, then you absolutely have thrown a controller. Yeah. And back in my day, that was called Ninja Gaiden Two, which <laughs> you know, I think the final boss I had to get drywall fixed, um, let alone a new controller because I had enough of that. So you're a Dark Souls guy, huh? You can actually yeah. play those games and do well. Dark Souls 1, 2, 3, Bloodborne. I'm currently doing Elden Ring. I haven't done Sekiro. Okay. Um, I took I took a two and a half to three year hiatus from video games when my kids gotcha. were born. I just didn't have the time. So you were not playing games while the children were actually being born with your wife in labor? No, no, no. no okay. Because no. that would have been like a really awesome final boss, right? You know, the, that would the, have. The very you upset wife. You, you'd be talking to a headstone. Exactly. <laughs> Live from the grave. It's from Who the Bell Tolls from Andrew's Headstone. For anybody who doesn't know what these games are that, I'm, that we're talking about, this, this is a series of games from a company called From Software that are notoriously difficult. And nobody ever beats it on the first try. These are, these are enemies that you fight that are designed that you have to learn how they all work before you have any chance of winning. And they cause incredible frustration in the average gamer. There's people on booktube like myself and like Mike that flat out refuse to play dark souls games because they are so frustrating and we just don't want to spend the time being miserable. There's other people like Andrew and Alan who are 
quite competent and good at those games. <laughs> I'm much more of a story driven narrative gamer than I am a Dark Souls guy. I think that kind of it feeds into my reading fantasy and sci fi more because I'll get more into like Mass Effect and Fallout and Uncharted and things that really have I love those games. Yeah. So you I play those them. as well. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. I'm I'm glad to hear that. So, but would you say that the Souls genre is kind of your favorite or do you, you sort of varies? It, it really depends um, on what my mood is, honestly. Like lately I've just been craving Dark Souls, but a after, after I'm done with the Elden Ring, I'm fully planning on playing Mass Effect Remastered. Yeah, I've done that. It's it's fantastic. And, and I think to what you were saying earlier about not remembering the fine details, I think you're going to find a lot of stuff that you've kind of let slip out of your mind. I mean, the major plot points, yeah, they're there, but the yeah. game is really fun anyways, but there will be conversations that you completely forgot that you had in the first place. I see that, you know, Heidi's asking a question. We can get into a little bit. I know you do work from home. Yeah. Do you want to share a little bit about what your career is or what you studied in school? Are there broad strokes of it that you, you know, that you're cool with? I mean, like school, I've got a few degrees. I've okay. got an, I've got an associate in web and graphic design. Okay. I've got a general studies bachelor's with a minor in communications. Um, that's about as far as my education goes. Okay. And then what I do for a living is I work for Anthem. Okay. Very but cool. What What I do there is there's government mandates involved and all that sort of stuff and it hasn't even gone into effect yet so it's gotcha 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 well yeah. let me ask you this how do you so you, you're working full-time obviously you mm -hmm. have a family wife and two young children and you have a booktube channel mm -hmm. how do you balance that time i mean like what do you specifically do because do you have a real, let me try to rephrase that. Do you have a routine that works for you or are you more yeah. fly by the seat of your pants when it comes to, you know, the juggling of it? No. So like any other job, I get breaks and I get lunch and, and stuff like that. And I mean, I've got a kid in preschool, so I've got quiet periods, um, shorts. I can probably four or five takes, get it in five minutes. Um, a, a video, most of my videos don't go longer than, 25 minutes unedited okay um, so any cuts that you see in there the long form is like 25 minutes um so that's about it and then when i am basically just doing work that doesn't require critical thinking which is can be data entry it can just sure. be reviewing documents whatever that is um i just throw these on these are my bone conduction headphones okay and i listen to audiobooks and then late at night, I read physical or ebooks. It's similar to me in that when I'm in my day to day stuff that doesn't require, because, you know, at different parts of the job require more concentration sometimes than others. And when I'm in those parts of the day that really I can be on autopilot as long as I get it done, that's when I get a lot of my, you know, audiobooks done and quite a bit of lit RPG as well, because I tend to do more of that audiobook style. So, I can appreciate that. So that that schedule kind of works for you. When yeah. did you start booktubing? I don't know if I caught you right at the beginning or if I think you'd probably been somewhat established by the time I found you, I think. March 7th or 9th of 2021 is when I started. So just um, over three years. Just over three years ago. And I started like it wasn't any intention to become a full on booktuber. I would go into Nico's Discord and I would rant about books. I'd have opinions like the Witcher series. I'm not very fond of the Witcher series. I would go in there and I would rant about it. Okay. Um, and at one point, um, she's not active in the community anymore, but her channel is still active and she still uploads. Megan from Megan's Reading Revelations and Nico kind of ganged up on me. at, And they were just like, hey, jump in front of a camera, give it a shot. I was like, it's going to be terrible. It was terrible. It's always terrible. Um, and I just uploaded. But, you know, I think that that's pretty standard advice that a lot of people that have done book two before. It's just make a video and your yeah. first, you're going to be terrible. And 
whatever. And uh, I get that. I get that too. Is it hard to go back and watch old videos or have you, you just flat out don't do it? I I did a, uh, a book haul series. Well, I started a book haul series and I haven't continued it, even though I keep meaning to, but they're hard to make. Um, it just requires additional editing that I'm very lazy and I don't like to do heavy edits on my stuff. Um, it's called uh, Into the Vault. Okay. And I went in and I rewatched my first book haul to give, like, did I like it? Did I DNF it? Did I unhaul it? Do I still have it? And that was, I was very, very critical in that video. And people, like, I, most of the comments were like, hey, chill out, be nice to yourself. Like, because I think I unhauled or DNF'd like half of that first book haul. <laughs> Yeah, that may not be. That may be. Oh Matt, gosh. Matt from Matt's Fantasy Book Reviews is asking, do we have the same bookcases? No, Matt. As a matter of fact, Andrew is just sitting two feet to my right as <laughs> as we speak, but we wanted to make this look professional. So we've got, you know, two different cameras and yeah, yeah. different lighting. lighting. You know, we really, you know, we could not see th- Matt just he he sussed us out. I don't yeah. know. He's read a lot of books. He he knew- I got these from Target. These are Ikea. Yeah. You and they went like Billy's. They're the Billies. Yeah. yeah. They were on sale and it was just like, I was just about, you know, thinking about starting the channel and I had known Tori from doing um, the readathon stuff. And I had told her it was probably going to be at some point in the fall because I was really hoping that these bookcases would go on like some sort of a holiday sale or a Black Friday sale. And that's why I was like, OK, perfect. Let's let's get them right after Black Friday. And we're pretty good. To I go. want to upgrade to the Billies because they're wider and taller. Which yeah, means I could have more books. Yeah. Um, we're not there yet. We're, we're, we're not there yet. I've still got about three shelves worth free of space. I got to tell you, this is this is weird, but I am terrible at putting things together. And Kay pointed out just now in the chat this, which I don't know if I have it. There we go. I don't know if you can see the difference when I turn the little light on in the little um, book nook that, I, that we put together last week. But I am horrible at putting together things like, you know, Ikea. So I went to task. Very good at it. <laughs> I'm, I'm the worst. And I, I mean, these books would all be on the floor or they'd be, you know, it would make for a great TV, I suppose, if the whole thing toppled over on me, you know, live. No. But well, it'd be, we'd get views. I mean, you know. Well, yeah, sure. We'd get views, but it wouldn't be good. <laughs> I, it might be my last, you know, for, I guess we found out for whom the bell does toll when his bookshelves <laughs> fell on the host. But, you know, so I'm terrible. Is I look up Task Rabbit, and I find this guy who's retired and just does it for fun. And he's like, I'll put together all five of your bookcases for you together. And he quotes me a price that's cheaper than even one bookcase. And I was like, absolutely, dude. So he came over and it turns out he used to work in bars. So we were talking bar talk for about four hours while he was over here just putting these together. But nice. Yeah. And Philip, Philip, same thing. Ikea. So folks, if you're watching and you think that, you know, you have to have all this dough to put into, you know, bookshelves, telling you. Target, Ikea, they're super, super high quality and they work and they look good. So, and uh, look at another person. Hey, Ikea. Yeah. yeah if you're wondering. She, if you, she's got the upgraded version where it's got the corner shelf. Yeah. I just like to say a quick shout out to our good friends at Ikea mm-hmm. in case they happen to be watching for whom the bell tolls. We're still looking for that furniture sponsor. We oh, haven't yeah. we haven't quite decided yet who's going to be the spon- the official furniture and bookshelf sponsor of Belltube and, and but possibly Andrews Wizardly Reads as well. So, you I'm know, never taking a sponsor, but I'd take them. If, if you're thinking about making an offer, do it while they're hot because Target's also interested. They, yeah, yeah. we'll see we'll see we'll see all right so let's move on a little bit it, it's cool that we have some creators in the chat too because yeah. i think i've learned more from other booktubers than anybody else really i mean certainly you the what gotta ask questions you got to and I, I have found that the things that i struggle with are other people's strengths so maybe you can share some tips for fellow creators about 
your process or the juggling of responsibilities? Uh, because I think that that isn't necessarily unique to you. Booktube is not really, I mean, unless you are in the hundred, you know, several hundred thousand person, you know, subscriber deal, it, it's difficult to make a reasonable living, um, or probably impossible, um, I, unless, unless, unless you're watching Ikea. <laughs> yeah, right. He's going to pay my salary from now if, on. If you'd like to see more content, you know, you know where to call. But yeah. I, but for those other creators that are out there, like I said, some of them are in chat. Some of them are just watching later on replay. You've been doing this for three years. You've yeah. got to have, you know, what would you share with somebody that might be useful? Well, I mean, a lot of it's just standard advice when it comes to like, if you're not feeling like recording, don't force it. Just don't just don't record um because it's going to show in the video um either your edited video is going to be very jumpy which I've, ha I've had a couple of those where i forced it uh, and i wish i didn't yeah i mean i've had one that i call the benny hana you know edit yeah. where it's just like chopped into a million places and all of a sudden you know i'm looking this way that i'm looking that way and i'm like a bird that's head is moving you know through the cuts and and one of the the hardest things is like everybody like a lot of the current generation wants to be youtubers do it for a hobby. If it turns into something, great. Don't pin your hopes and dreams on something that like, oh, I'm going to make. I'm I mean, I know people who have been booktubers now for two to three years and they still haven't hit the thousand subscriber mark mm -hmm. to even monetize the channel. Yeah. Um, it, nothing is promised. Nothing is guaranteed. I never know what's going to be picked up and what's going to do well. Sometimes I'm very surprised when anything does well. Right. And we were talking even, you know, before we went live tonight that some of the videos that we make that, you know, when we put them in the bag and hit that upload button, we're like, oh boy, I don't know what that was. And then all of a sudden it's like views, views, clicks, views, subscriptions, subscriptions, subscriptions. And you're like, what? Yeah. You're like, I didn't even like that one. So. And some community. Community is the last one. Find a community, find friends. Yeah. And you're good to go. Yeah. That fun. is. That is, you know, I think that's the advice that I got really from Tori was, you know, before, really even before you hit the gas pedal, try to know some other people that'll help you, you know, give you a lift up when you get started. Because it is mm -hmm. hard starting from scratch. Um, but, you know, like I said, we, we do have a really interesting community. But when you talk about your channel and what do you think like as opposed to doing something else with that exact same time is unique to YouTube? So, for example, you've got your day job, you've got your family life, you've got your reading hobbies. If something was slotted in besides YouTube, what makes YouTube kind of more special that something else is not slotted in there? Oh, man, I guess it's kind of a strange question and asking no, why you do this. No, it. it it's going to be an odd answer because it's morphed. Okay. Um, initially, it was fun. And now it's more habit. Okay. I am I am very much a creature of habit. I have my routine. I'm slightly autistic. Okay. And so once I start doing something, like if I have a, a period of time where like I want to record a video and I can't record a video, it actually starts to bother me mainly because I'm such a creature of habit. Yeah. Um, a, a lot of, a lot of my recording is okay. I have my schedule. So my schedule is I do Monday, Friday, uh, regular videos. And then every other day or every day other than those is a short. Yep. And then occasionally I'll throw in random, um, random live shows. Not as often lately. It's just been busy, chaotic, I've been tired. Um, and stuff like that. And so I just haven't forced live sh live streams. And then on top of that, I keep four videos edited and uploaded already on the channel for future release at any given time. I've noticed then, that. I've noticed that about you too. And I love that. I mean, that's preparation beyond preparation because you've got like some, you know, some basically it's not real money, but it's kind of like putting some money in the savings account for the rainy day that you don't really feel like making a video. Right. You've got four of them sitting there ready to go. But on top of that, I've also got an additional four videos already recorded on my memory card. Oh my God. So I'm 
there's sometimes you'll see content that I recorded three months ago. I, I just watched one and it was really funny. You came on editing. Andrew came on and said, hi, this is editing. Andrew here. Just want to let y'all know I made this video three months ago. And I love that you're so open with your community about that because it's hilarious. I mean, yeah. it's like, was it like one big, like, push to get out ahead of making that content and then it was just more or less just kind of keeping that fed you know in terms of backup supply do you recall having a big push where you're like hey i'm gonna make five videos all at once and throw them in the back burner just in case so it's funny my my schedule used to be a lot more i used to do four videos a week um and that was probably a year and a half two years ago um Evie, it's actually arriving today, so I haven't started it yet, but it will be um, started here soon. I've been promising Evie I was going to do Children of Dune for years now. Okay. Um, but basically, I, I did four videos a week. I did Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I think. Okay. Um, for a while. And that was initially done because I had too many videos backlogged and I needed to clear them out. Um, back when tags were a big thing, people kept tagging me. Sure. And so I, tr I wanted to do those tags and it got to the point where I had a sheet of tags. And so I was trying to do a tag a week and uh, obviously tags aren't really as popular on YouTube anymore. I've still got a, a list somewhere. Isn't, isn't that interesting? Because I do remember, you know, watching a few years ago, it was about right when you were getting started, I was watching a lot of Mike and, you know, occasionally he would get a tag, but he just notoriously didn't do a whole lot of tags because he had other content that he was putting out. But pretty much everybody else was, hey, I got hit with the fill in the blank tag. And yeah. I can see where that could get overwhelming. And I can see where that might get kind of like, well, they tagged me and I don't want to be a jerk about it. So I should probably do it. And maybe you end up making content you're not fully, you know, mentally invested in yet at the same time <laughs> but at the same time i have to say that has to be kind of nice in terms of not having to be so creative all the time mm -hmm. when you have specific prompts that you're making a video around you're not you know having to you know figure out who your 80s persona is and make sure the wig arrives on time uh, so yeah and by the way folks while i'm talking about our main man rick thunder if you go to the belt tube store channel now we have merchandise i told andrew i was going to throw that in at some yeah, point you did but we do have we do have some rick thunder merchandise in the store and we actually have about we got five designs that are coming up uh, that'll be available all within the next week, but I don't want to get too far off topic. I think what Evie is saying here makes some sense. Um, the tags also got old because they were all kind of the same, asking the same questions in a slightly different way to get to the same answers. So, And there was annual tags that would roll around every year, like the end of year book tag, the uh, spring has sprung book tag. There was a couple of them. The book two birthday. What's up, Chris? I'll be talking to actually Chris. Speaking of uh, live show hiatus, I think we're scheduled for the 27th. Is he coming on your show? Mm hmm So people actually do get invited on your show. Listen, okay, you know what? Here, here you go. Here is your invite. May will make it happen. All right, folks, you're here to hear first. I'm coming with the merchandise. You know I'm going to be wearing apparel. It might say Andrew's Wizardly Reads. You don't even know what it's going to say. Hey, you know what? I'll, I'll get to merch eventually. I, I've had like three people ask for it, but yeah, when I hit 10K, maybe. I don't know, like two years. You know what? Um, and we'll talk about this more later, but when I don't have a guest, but there, there, and I'll talk about it in a video why I actually did merch as early as I have. It's mostly for fun because I think that there's some fun stuff, but hi, Chris, he is such a, such an awesome dude. Here's a, here's a question that I thought that I wanted to ask you specifically because you're somebody like me that reads a wide range of types of books. Mm -hmm. How do you decide, do you feature everything you read on the channel or how do you decide what's going to make it, you know, what's going to make the cut for you? So is the question you're asking, what do I do book reviews on or recommendation videos? I just or? like, like, do you talk to in some regard about everything you're reading or 
or do you just kind of pick and choose more? A little bit. So th there are some things that will just slip my mind in the moment. Yeah. And, and that um, happens. That that happens from time to time. But I will usually talk about everything I've read in a wrap up, unless it's a DNF. My brain is like a sieve. Okay. If I don't like it, then immediately the holes open up and it just falls out of my brain. Yeah. Um, and so it, it, when people go, hey, give me a thing, a, a list of books you've DNF'd, unless it left an impression on me, like Poppy War. Right. Then it, it's gone out of my brain. I don't remember. Um, I've maybe got 10 books off the top of my head. If that, then I could tell you I've DNF'd. So is Poppy War the most popular? <laughs> that's not rhymes. Is that the most popular series that you've DNF'd? Or is there something that everybody was up in arms that they could not believe didn't make the grade for you? No, it was it was one of the first buddy reads I did with Nico. Not the first, but it was one okay. of the first ones. And we both hated it. And so we got into this. I don't want to swear, but we got into this complaining fest Yeah, uh, about it in our discord. And uh, to this day, like we both just can't stand it. This is, I've not, I've not read it. I think, I think I watched Mike talk about it once and TBR Mar mountain for me is so big. It yeah. does not take very much for something to get kicked off the mountain. And that's exactly what happened there because I ran into a couple of people that I aligned very well with and I was like, yeah, you know what? If two or three people that I'm pretty consistently have similar thoughts on a book really dislike it and they have legitimate and valid reasons presented, it's going to get kicked off the mountain too. Yeah, there's there was just some logical things on there that, like, don't get me wrong, I thought the world was actually quite interesting. Um, but the characterization didn't work for me at all. Um, but that's also why I DNF so quickly is because the mountain is large. I've, all, I've got about seven to 800 books here and I've still only read 500 of them. That's insane. And I know that, and I know that you've, and, and you know why I say it's insane is because I'm the total opposite. Every book you see behind me, I've read with the exception of what's on the April TBR. Murphy, Murphy made me feel bad. Really? Um, Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, Murphy's got like 40 books in her entire collection. She hasn't read. And when I told her my number, she was just like, no, Andrew. Yeah. <laughs> well, I see. It's cool because then now you have, you know, kind of like your own invented challenge where it's the read my shelf challenge, which I think. Yeah, I think Tori's doing that as well. Tori so. and Kay got me into it. So Tori and Kay started doing it together and then they kind of roped me in. They're, they're some of my book two besties. Yep. And they roped me into it. We've literally got a Voxer chat called Booktube Besties. And they roped awesome. me into it. They were like, you will join us. Read your books. <laughs> I love it. That's that's fantastic. And and I want to answer this question, but then I have a Discord question for you. Mm -hmm. But Heidi's asking if I liked Black Tongue Thief or not. And that's something that you and I chatted about on Twitter yesterday. I can't read it, but it's... So... <laughs> In, in a nutshell, I'm going to be talking about this, you know, I'm sure either in tomorrow, that's eh, not going to be in tomorrow's video, but it's going to be in one that I do later, you know, when I talk about second quarter books, I think I wish I, well, I know I wish I would have read the book because the parts that I could really understand very well. And, and if you're unaware, the author is from Florida or he lives in Florida, he's an American, but he, he chose, and it's the first person book in the first person narrative style, he chose to make that character have a very thick Irish or Scottish brogue. I'm not sure which. And I give him credit. You know, I mean, he stuck with the bit. He made it. He made a choice. I don't particularly think it was a wonderful business choice, but he made an artistic choice that he was going to run with doing a pretty heavy accent. And I just was... I, I, I wish he would have done it with a, like a side character. So it would have maybe come up more in dialogue and we could see that side of his unique talents because when he was reading the acknowledgements at the end in his own voice is wonderful. I was like, wow, I wish this guy would have just used his own voice the whole time because the book itself, I found to have some pretty interesting things that I haven't read before. So I think it was mostly an experiential thing more than the material. And I know Andrew that that's happened to you kind of recently. I think, was it with, was it with 
uh, the Five Warrior Angels trilogy or something where the audio kind of messed it up for you. And then you went back and did the physical reading and you liked it better. So, yeah, that, that's happened a few times. It wasn't Five Warrior Angels. I haven't come back to it. But okay. that, that does factor into it. Um, I will say, I think Gilman also narrates The Lesser Dead and he loses the the accent. And it, it's a very, very good vampire book. Yeah, um, I mean, the guy's got a good, like I said, what he was doing, the acknowledgements. Adrian Tchaikovsky also has a great name, uh, voice too. Interesting. He does a couple of his novellas. Um, the audio production is terrible, but his voice is great. <laughs> the mixing, the mixing is bad. Yeah. Um, but uh, Tim Gerald Reynolds, and this is unpopular. Tim Gerald Reynolds and uh, Stephen Brand. I re- so I was listening to their their audios. I wasn't enjoying their performances. Recently, I've come back to them, um, and I've slowed down the performances, and I'm having a better experience with them. Uh, but Tim Gerald Reynolds also, I believe did the five warrior angels. So it still kind of fits. And he also did, um, it's up here, a uh, saga of the forgotten warrior by Larry Correa. I'm starting that one tomorrow, a book four tower of silence, because Madison told me how great of a narrator he is on this series. And I sight read the first three books. So I figured I've got it pulled out to read next month. I mean, what what do I do, folks? I got Madison on one side telling me to do the audio, and I got Andrew on the other side telling me to read it. I'm sorry, I'm, Andrew. I'm, I'm, I'm it, sorry it, Madison's going to win. Um, Madison's fantastic. <laughs> Madison is amazing. I would listen to it at about a 1.3. Okay. If, if you're used to listen to it sped up. I I'm not. Down I generally, I, is that, what do you normally listen to? 1.5. 1.5 is your is kind of your locked in number. Mm-hmm. I, I find of, the performance stays crisp. Right. Yeah. I, I can still get the full range of the performance. Some narrators talk faster, and that's when you've got to slow it down because it kind of just runs together. And if they don't inflect a whole bunch, like Stephen Brand, he's got a great voice, but he doesn't inflect a whole lot. And so if you speed it up, it all just kind of smushes together. Yeah. And you lose the story. And it took me ranting about him for like six months before I was just like, you know what? Like, I want to read the book. I don't have time, but I have time for an audio. Let's throw it on. And I was like, I wonder what happens if I do this. And I was like, oh. Right. (laughs) You know, it's like, but it's interesting too, because I am the opposite of DNFing as Andrew. You're not going to find more polar opposites on BookTube. Andrew has literally DNF'd a book in what's the, what's your record for how quickly you DNF something? First paragraph? Probably first, first paragraph. Line. First line, first paragraph, right? I mean, there's not a lot shorter than that. Um I think I've DNF one book in my life. Um, and it was the same oh, book. No, it, was, it was the same book twice. So we are certainly polar opposites when it comes to DNF. So that's interesting to me when you talk about speeding up the book, because I think that's how I get out of, at least on my Audible or my audiobook reads, that's how I get out of the DNF. I didn't DNF it. I might have sped it up, though. And like, for for example, Clive Barker's Weave World, I was at 2.1% for the second half of the book because it was just like... It's an interesting book. And did you do a Magica? What, what's that? Did you do a Magica? I don't know what that is. That's another Clive Barker book. Oh, no, I didn't. I did. Uh, I did Weave World only. And no. that was that was <laughs> that was for the DNF challenge. And if anybody is new here to the channel back in January, I asked seven of my favorite book tubers, Andrew being one of them, to offer me a book that they DNF. Now, for Andrew, it was easy because, you know, we're talking about thousands of books. What was the first ch- chapter name? Uh, it was called DNF. Yeah. <laughs> The first chapter of the book that Andrew had given me, the book was called The Big Ship at the Edge of the Universe. Chapter one is called DNF. And it was like so serendipitous. And I don't think he even meant to do that. I didn't. Um, <laughs> and in all things considered, it was my f- f- for either first or second favorite book of the DNF challenge. So it wasn't bad. It just wasn't amazing. No, it could have been way better. And I know that there's, I think, two other books that come after it. Uh, again, TBR Mountain is so big. I don't know how that's going to ever climb up, you know, to the peak to to get out of the actual 
reading list, but it's pretty good. I like what Matt's saying here is that it's a pretty badass flex. Sure is. Absolutely. Well, uh, so there can be, there can be certain indicators in a book and I believe in extrapolation. Okay. Uh, so like if on page one, we've got a young girl and she's thinking about having her period on page one. Right. Probably can extrapolate that there's going to be more of that sort of content throughout the book. Yeah. Not my thing. Yeah. If a certain style of phrase, like, um, oh, which one was it? I don't want to say the wrong book. It's big, thick, yellow. It's got a dragon on the cover. Prior of the Orange Tree. Um, Prior of the Orange Tree. At one point, there was a line in there. I, I made it about, I think, 30 pages. And it goes, I had seen him, and so I could not unsee him. I was like, well. That was it? Well, well, no, I was yeah. like, hey, that's a dumb line. Yeah. That, that's a stupid line. Don't do that again. And then, like, it did something similar. And then it did it again, and I just shut the book and That's sold that. It. Goodbye. Pango books. That's it. Um, so stuff like that. Like if, if I see stuff that bugs me and I can extrapolate this is going to continue bugging me, I'm the type of reader that will send me into a reading slump if I force it. Yeah. So I do F. Well, I mean, but that's better though, too. I mean, why force something that you don't like? I've been really, really lucky that almost everything that I've picked up over the last couple of years has been pretty good. And you know, I'm doing a video tomorrow, which is really a listing of my least favorite books. And there's really only one of them that I've read, you know, recently. So that that's that's pretty good. You were part of Spiffbo judging, were you not? I was a sub judge. Yeah, right. So you were on a team. Is that yeah. okay? So when when were you reading those books? Was it like last May, June ish, July ish, something like that? Oh, let's see. So the finalists are being announced end of this month it was probably april-ish i think okay how Maybe. did you whose team were you on for that bookborn you were on bookborn okay yeah. cool no another booktuber i've yet to ever meet talk to chat with whatever so if any of you all are friends with her and would like her to come on <laughs> let her know andrew dnf the super chat here we go uh i did i i, I laughed which means I, did. I i finished it he did Oh my God, that is so funny. Here was my semifinalist right here. The Price of Power. Okay. And and was that was that something that you had talked about with Bookborn prior? Did she just come to you and say, hey, I'm you know getting some people to read? Um, you know, do you want to help help me judge this? No, so they had so Bookborn did it for a few years. And I was very, I, I still am rather close with Leslie, the nerdy narrative. And um, Leslie was also a sub judge. And okay. so she kind of went out to the group when some people dropped for uh, Spiffo 9. Okay. Nine? Ten's upcoming, right? Anyway. Yes. Um, And she was like, do you know anybody who would be interested in judging? And I had expressed interest the year before. I was like, hey, if any opportunity, just throw my name into the, into the ring. And so she did. And Bookborn reached out to me. So Very that cool. Was, that was kind of how that happened. And did you enjoy? Was, did you enjoy being a sub judge? Yeah, yeah, it was fun. Very cool. Did the book that you select end up getting past? You know, was that the one that Bookborn ended up going with? No, it was not. No. Were you surprised in any way, or did you no. just kind of? You were not. So the no. so your selections were just, yeah. I, I knew whatever I chose wasn't going to get submitted forward, mainly because our tastes are almost polar opposite. Gotcha. So she had, Bookborn, of course, has the final say. Sure. Um, and as much as I, I wanted to fight for it, I can't force somebody else to, to put a book forward. My Children of Dune just got delivered. <laughs> How about that? Who was asking about that? Was that Evie? Yeah. Evie was. Yeah. Evie, he's got the book. He's going to leave the stream right now and start reading. Actually, he could read it to all of us. I, I ask about Spiffo, and and uh, you know it's interesting because I am a sub judge coming up for Spiffo ten. That's right, you're on Phil's um, team. I am on Philip's team, and I'm pretty excited about it because I have a feeling that you know Philip and I's tastes don't disalign. Is that even a word? Well, who cares? Philip will tell me. Um, 
you know, he's the English professor, but I think that if I get one that I think is, you know, fantastic, it stands a chance that Philip may agree. Right for so, it. I'm going to be fighting for that right to party. There's no hey, doubt. I mean, I'm a free agent going forward. So there you go. I have to, I have to shout out John at talking story. I oh, love yeah. you guys tag Brian. You're it. I don't know. It could be Jacob sending this. It's really hard to tell. I'm not sure if John quite knows how the super chats work yet. Um, it's possible. I don't know, but folks, Keep an eye on that ten dollars on that stream because, uh, yeah, that's all I'm going to say at this point. But yeah, are you guys trading ten dollars back and forth? You just you just kind of keep an eye on that. Uh, I I couldn't say I, I I couldn't say anything like that. I mean, <laughs> that would be that that seems like it's almost gaming. You know, the super chat to you know make <laughs> us look popular. I don't know. <laughs> All right, so Doug has read. This is this is a really good person. I'm glad he's in the chat tonight because Doug is so well read, and his lit RPG probably exceeds both of ours, which is difficult to do um, in the breadth of his of his uh, reading in that genre. So uh, I'm glad he's here. Uh, how? Let me ask you this. So. Over three years, you did mention that things have changed a little bit. Mm -hmm. How is your perspective on either reading or reviewing or both different, say, if you, whatever book you're reading right now, when you decide to talk about versus what it was, you know, a year ago or two years ago, or even when you got started, is it different? Yes. I used to do a lot more book reviews. Um, it is harder for me to sit down and talk about just a singular book rather than to just do a recommendation video and include it in there in a list. Um, my review style, I don't have bullet points. I don't have a script. Everything I do is just top of the head. Mm -hmm. I, I may have a list of the characters' names written down on mm -hmm. the side in case I forget a character that I need to talk about. Uh, and even then, sometimes I miss those because I just forget to look down. Uh, I'm so just looking at the camera and spewing out whatever comes out of my mouth. Um, I, fi I find that difficult to do. Now, if a book absolutely blows my socks off, like Iron Prince by Bryce O'Connor and Luke Chimalenko is, is a, is a recent one. Mm -hmm. um, now, Luke, was, and Luke is a lit RPG guy as well. Yes. Yeah. Um, and uh, J.A. Andrews. I, I've got one for J.A. Andrews coming up, but I've, I'm only doing about two dedicated book reviews a month at this point, which I'm not entirely happy with. I would like to get back to just standard book reviews, but I DNF and turn and burn so much that like to create a schedule of what I'm going to record is like, OK, I'm reading these four books and I'm going to do book reviews for all of them. Well, I might DNF two or three of them. So I can't do book reviews for that. And that creates kind of a, a weird sort of mental state of just, well, I want to read for enjoyment. And then if I feel like I have something to, to share, right. I will then do a book review on books that I really, really enjoy. I very rarely do critique reviews, mainly because I, I haven't read enough of the book to critique <laughs> tongue tied to to. <laughs> We'll take it. that. We'll, we'll derfy that. We'll take that out in editing, folks. Don't worry about it. Oh no! I, I, you <laughs> that and throw it up on a short. I don't care. I, well, hey, I have permission. <laughs> Sweet. I've done that before, where literally I just snipped out a tongue tied, and it got three thousand views. That you know, sometimes <laughs> sometimes the blooper reels are the best, right? Cristavo's <laughs> blooper reels are like I love them. They're just fantastic. Oh, yeah. I think, and I think Kayla did one today too. Um, so that's I'll that, have to go. I'll have to go search for that. That that's that's pretty funny. Um, you know, it's it's interesting when we talk about book reviews because I see you know Matt's been in the in the chat here tonight and and his channel is you know that's book reviews and that's the majority of his content is reviewing books. Yep. I think for me, in some regard, I I have been a reader my whole life, but growing up, the books that I had to read in school and give book reports on and book reviews on. I think it turned me off to doing dedicated book reviews. Yeah. I love doing recommendations. I love, love say, I love saying what I think, you know, some of the nuggets that other people will find as, as much as I hope they find is, is 
the word I'm looking for. I hope they find as many of the nuggets that I find in certain books. And I try to be as excited as possible about it because I legitimately am. But when it comes to reviewing the book itself, I just, I don't know. It's not something that I personally want to, you know, spend time making the content on for the most part. Is that, and you said you do about two a month now? What? The, of, of the yeah. yeah. About two um, a month. It, it's roughly been that I used to do around four. So I guess I, you could say I've kind of cut it in half. Yeah. Um, I, I would like to do that. But again, like I said earlier, my brain's like a sieve. So a lot right. of people are like, oh, we'll just come back. And uh, I don't notate. I don't annotate. I Me don't neither. do stickers. I read Me the neither. book and then whatever stays in my brain comes out after about a month. If I was going to do a book review, other than telling you like, Hey, I thought this was dope. Yeah. I don't really remember enough to to go through and be like, hey, this is why you should read it. This character is awesome. This is was so cool. And it's just not my review style. But I think people know that by now. Right. That you're I'm not... just going to spew out a bunch of nonsense and like you're going to get a general feeling of how it made me feel and what I thought was cool. And yeah. if I thought it was worth exploring. Yeah. Um, you're not going to come to me for literary analysis. I'm not that guy. Me um, and you both, brother. I mean, we got to <laughs> we got to play to our strengths, right? Yeah. And I've you know said since the minute I started in this channel, there's no way I'm going to be the analysis guy and the breakdown guy, um, yeah. either grammatically, you know, or just in terms of comparative literature wise. I mean, just any of it. It, it wouldn't be fun for me. It would be more of a project and it would seem more like work. And if this ever becomes like work to me, that's when I know it's time to take time out um, because I don't want it to feel like work. This is supposed to be fun. So I that's very where community comes in. I, I can't tell you the amount of times I've gotten stressed out and I've reached out to either Nico, Tori or Kayla. And yeah. I'm, just like, I'm freaking out. I don't know if I want to do this anymore. Right. And just kind of talk through the emotions and the feelings. Well, and stuff like I, that. I think that's awesome for people to hear. Uh, yeah. Not only for content creators that are you know currently out there doing this, but also for people that are thinking about doing it or really for any part in life, you know, try to have some type of a community because mm -hmm. while they may be there for you, you're a good enough person that you're there for them as well. And, you know, it, it goes both ways. And it actually led me into my you perfectly segued into my next question was what part does community, you know, play in your channel, be it, you know, whether the comment section or discord, because you do have your a discord, correct? Yeah. Your own. OK, well, it, 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 there's a funny story behind it. But yes, I do. Tell, tell me the funny story. I don't it, know the funny. I don't story. know if you're going to find it funny, but the, the discord started out as Nico's Book Reviews discord. Okay. I was a member of that Discord. Okay. A lot of times what you'll see happen, or at least a while ago, um, was basically you would have these Discords, and then people would, if they started their channel, they would leave the Discord, and they would start their own Discord. And it was expected when my channel started going that I would leave Nico's Discord, and I said, I don't want to. And so Nico was just like, well, we'll just rebrand. I was like, cool. Yeah. And at one point he was like, I'll just give it to you. And I was like, no. <laughs> Do it together, right? Yeah. Like I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be here without Nico. And you guys met through Booktube, right? Interesting. Yeah, he, he lives two states over. There's no way. Right. Nico. <laughs> Isn't that like it's just so random? I mean, Tori lives maybe about an hour, hour and a half for me. But other than that, I mean, people are just it's it's amazing that we have this sense of community here. Yeah, Evie's Evie's summed it up right here. Best uh, book, best book to bromance. I mean, e Evie knows. She does. Nico, like it, it, it's funny. Like I'll be messaging Nico, and Nico just be like, "Dude, you're whining today," and like we we just like we talk constantly all the time. Um, but I don't know. I I, I love interacting with Nico. I just came back from a weekend trip at his house. Like last week. Very. Oh, that's awesome. See, Evie says you guys are the best booktube bromance. All I can say is John and I might be the best booktube old mance. So. Y'all aren't old. We, we may be the old. Uh, but, the, <laughs> but community, anyway, getting back to your question. Yeah. Yes. Is, thank you. 
super important because it can lead to the mental health aspects that a lot mm-hmm. of people don't really want to talk about right here on youtube like you'll see a bunch of the bigger booktubers talk about like oh my mental health and i'm not feeling it mm-hmm. but it's not just the big guys who have the mental health days it's yeah the, the medium guys the small right. people like if your channel's not growing it's great to have somebody to talk to to vent about stuff like that like if you've been struggling, you feel like you're running in place, it's good to have somebody to go to. If you feel like you're not bringing anything to the table anymore, it's good to have people to talk to. Also, it's good to just talk to people about books because a lot of people aren't readers these days. Yeah. I mean, and and, and I think that in, in some regard, what you're saying resonates with me tremendously because you're right. Some of the larger booktubers will be more straightforward about mental health issues, whatever they may be. But I think even the, just the startup booktubers that, and I, and I truly think that for the people that don't know if you've spent any time in a video editor before or in front of a camera, it takes quite a bit of work. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you, you pour into that creative, you know, tank within within ourselves and we put it all out there. Right. And we do the editing things that we want it to do. And then it's like the viewers just trickle. There's just, you know, it just doesn't happen. And I think that, that it's great to have other people that have gone through that and know that the perseverance matters. I mean, I've only been doing this for five months, so I don't have the credibility to say, well, Hey, you know, I've, I've been here for several years to know, but I've had videos that have, you know, flopped in in terms of what I would consider to be good, you know, viewership versus bad. And it's nice to be able to get on, you know, Discord or X or whoever I'm friends with. And just even if it's something as simple as commiserating, it's, yeah. you know, it's useful. Evie's so, got a great comment here. I'm trying to find it here. Here we go. You realize how important the community is as a whole and individuals in it when stuff happens, like what happened with Durfee, when Alan had his car wreck, lovely Sharon, et cetera. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's this is so ass backwards of a community that I'm used to. Be, and, I, and I've said this before, but, I mean, you're never going to find more kind people than in this, you know, particular booktube corner of youtube for sure uh you'll get the occasional comment or whatever but in terms of people that really matter that show up for your good videos show up for your crappy videos they come to your live streams they comment on your stuff they engage with you they participate in your discord if you have one i mean that is just uh, so foreign to me coming from a business background where it is so cutthroat and it's 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 great when everybody realizes that, you know, the, what is it? The lift, what's the phrase? I'm like the, the rising tide lifts all ships. Oh, I yeah. think, I think is what it is. And I think business people fundamentally get that, but they don't want to get that. They are fine with all ships rising as long as their ship rises just a little bit higher than everybody else's. And I don't find that here at all, which is, you know, Wait, here, Kyle has a question. He's he's making a statement because he has spent many years of his life in the nightclub community. Are you suggesting that it's less wholesome? Yes, that is exactly <laughs> that is the shortest answer I'm ever going to give on this channel. Yes, it is far less wholesome. So when you're talking about community, does anything come to mind to you? And I don't mean to put you totally on the spot, but has there been like some memorable feedback or some interaction with viewers, not booktubers, but viewers that, you know, come to mind that are memorable to you? Hopefully in a good way. What do you mean? Well, like, ha- like I remember com- it just off the top of my head constantly. Well, no, not at all. Just but like a comment that made your day or, you know, a, a, a random person on the Internet having some sort of an engagement with you. Like I said, it could be a comment. It could be something in your live stream where it just sort of validated in your mind what you're doing is good. I mean, so um, one of the ones that immediately comes to mind uh, is the wandering in. I did a, a wandering in video. Um, and I wasn't even the first person to do it, but I mean, when people see mine, they, they comment on it and then saying, Hey, I saw your video. I'm now five books deep and I'm having the time of my life. 
It's like, great. Um, That's yeah, awesome. Gary, Gary did send me uh, nesting dolls from New Zealand for my kids. We still have them. Uh, they're in pieces, but they're <laughs> spread throughout like four different toy bins, but we still have them. Um, so that was that was a very, very good um, a gift. And yeah. uh, I mean, I used to do reading sprints a lot of the time. We had a group of reading sprinters. Mm -hmm. Um the, the the group has since kind of drifted apart. Evie was of course a part of that. Um let's see, there was Kate, there was Gregory LaPerch, there was Kate the almost book doctor. Uh there was Grace Dion, I believe, was part of that. There's a few of us. I but... just I just found her channel not that long ago. See, I'm Grace, still Grace is awesome. Yeah, I'm still finding, you know, I'm so new to this still. I'm still finding, kind of, like, I just found Leslie's channel a couple of months ago. The Nerdy and, Nerd? Yeah. Oh, Leslie's amazing. Yeah. Le Le Leslie's my book, too, Big Sister. That's awesome. Yeah, I left a comment on her uh, video the other day saying I'd love her to come on the show because I think she's just such an interesting personality behind that camera. And I think what you see is what you get with her, and I love that. Um, Life has gotten rather busy for Leslie right now. Gotcha. So she's got some personal stuff going on. Cool. But, no uh, worries. Yeah. The hopefully the show will be going for a long time, folks. So yeah, there's never any pressure. Um, what is this? I can't remember. Oh, since Brian's got this going. Oh, was your thing on Wednesday nights? <laughs> Wine Wednesday reading sprints. I yeah. see. Okay. I got it. I got it. I got it. Cool, cool, cool. It was fun. Uh they got they got a little wild. Evie, you are on my list. Don't worry about it. I promise. Um, so that that's really good to know. One of the things that I love about you is that, again, I kind of feel like what you see is what you get. I don't, you know, I, I don't, I think we're seeing the actual Andrew when we watch you. Yeah. Are we? So earlier on, one second. Can you go see mommy? Go see mommy. Sorry, my. <laughs> um, so early on in the channel, yes. And then there was a period where I, I am a very excitable individual. Mm -hmm. I, like I can get very hyperactive. Right. Um, and so I would let that out. I would bottle it up and I would let that out in my videos. And so there was a period of like three months where it was just nothing but energy and I sure. found that wasn't sustainable. So this is kind of my new normal. This is this is me. This this is kind of what you what you get. So yes, this is me generally on a regular basis. Did I you feel very energetic? Right. I, I I do get a little bit higher and stuff like that. But overall, I would say this is mostly my baseline. Gotcha. I mean, I get that too because I try to put some energy into the videos that I'm putting out and. I've had that question, you know, is that, are you being authentic? You know, is it, is it truly you? And the answer is for the most part, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's me when I'm excited to talk about something that I'm excited to talk about. If, you know, if I'm doing something I don't particularly enjoy doing, I'm probably not all smiley guy, you know, <laughs> it, well, it is definitely you know, an aspect of my being. Yes. Right. And, and I think that that's, you know, I don't think it's performance when I watch you. I think we're getting, you know, the, the smell test, you, you pass the smell test when it comes to authenticity. <laughs> if that, if that, yeah. I, 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 it, dude, if I could smell you from Indiana all the way to Minnesota, then we, oh. you would not. You would I not, wouldn't be married. <laughs> yeah, that, that is true. So let me ask you. So I've not asked this question to anybody before, but I've asked it about music, but I want to ask about books. If okay. are there some are there some desert island books that God forbid you are on the desert island? What are some of the books that you'd like to have other than you know how the hell to get off a desert island, which would probably be the I first book. <laughs> that yeah, I mean, <laughs> other than immediate island remedies, you know, what poison, you know, which which trees have poisonous fruit, blah, blah, blah. You know, what fictional books, you know, come to mind for you if you were truly stuck on that island and could only bring a handful of books with you? Like a handful is like five. So sure. I'm, uh, probably Dandelion Wine. Okay. I've, see, I have not read that. By Ray Bradbury. Boy's Life by Robert McCammon. 
another book I haven't read. Oh gosh, I don't know if any fantasy is going to make this. The Green Mile by Stephen King. Is there a pattern that that they're kind of like more meaningful on a deeper level to you? Yeah. Um. Let's see. Hmm. Like it's got to be something that I can I can just read and read and read and read and read. Um. The Hobbit. The Hobbit. Okay. Fantasy does make the list and. Oh, the last one's a hard one. I don't know. Um, Shogun would probably last me a while. <laughs> Shogun, you you might get you might get you know you might get uh, rescued by the time you finish that Andrew Uh there, There's no doubt. Uh, when did you read Shogun? Last year. Okay. Did you read it? Like I think Tori read it around mm-hmm. last year too. Did you guys buddy read that, or was it just a bunch of people there was a read-along and like i'm terrible at read-alongs i'm terrible at them um and so basically like everybody's like okay we're gonna read this chunk and then i just blow through it i'm i'm awful to be a buddy reader with like i'm i'm just the worst either i start too late i start too soon i finish too fast i take too long to get to it and everybody's already done it just um, but yes, there was there was a read along going. I think Alan started it, and um, I wasn't part of like the live shows or anything with it. But I I read it during that time frame. Gotcha. Yeah, I I kind of fell in you know sort of in alignment with Mike again when he was showing the book, saying that the series was going to come out. And I'm old enough to remember when that show actually was originally on ABC on the miniseries. I think I was in elementary. Yeah, I think I was in elementary. I was in elementary school uh, when it came out, so I had heard about it, and yeah. But when I saw those trailers for the effects show that was coming out, and you know, Tori was like, "Ryan, you got to read Shogun. You got to read Shogun." And then Alan sent me that book, which is just insane because I was complaining that they don't make them that that edition anymore. Um, and Alan was so cool to send that to me, which was incredible Very time cool. um i figured you know what i'm going to read like maybe i'll do like books one and but in folks there's six there's six books within that six parts of the book yeah, maybe, I've got Jen down here somewhere that i'm supposed to be reading with tori this year well i meant like within shogun itself there's oh. like six different books but yeah there is something called the asian saga that shogun is book one of i think there's five or six books in mm-hmm. the Asian side. It spans well. like 400 years. Oh yeah. And it takes place in different countries, um, but it is obviously all in Asia, but I was going to do like two or three of the, of the books within Shogun. I couldn't put it down. I was like, this is so good. And this isn't fantasy. Other than chapter 40. Chapter 40 is a bit of a mess, but I don't remember. Oh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> again, you're talking to a nightclub guy. So, <laughs> water off a duck's back brother that was no biggie to me we used to have those parties at the club so nope, no thanks. <laughs> yeah. um, anyway if i can add a book i would probably say you, night watch as well speaking of alan but i don't I, I don't know that one what is it that is the sixth book in the city watch collection of Discworld. okay well i should know that because my book of the month was just men at arms yeah, so so yeah, okay. Well, I'll absolutely be reading that probably this year still because it's a very good book. I am I am so blown away by when I had mentioned earlier that I've only DNF'd one book and I did it twice. It actually was the first book of Discworld, The Color of Magic. Mm-hmm. And when I read Guards Guards last summer, I was like, ah, this is actually really good. And I decided to pick up Men in Arms last month and as good as Guards Guards is, I thought Men in Arms is far better because I was already vested in the characters. Peter but... Clay is also amazing. I would say my Excellent. favorite, my favorite is Guards Guards, Men in Arms, Feet of Clay, uh, Night Watch, and I liked I liked Snuff. I liked Snuff a lot. So yeah. Now are all are all of those within the Night Watch, City Watch. the yeah. City Watch? Yeah. Very good. Have you read a lot of Discworld outside of that? I don't want Derry to yell at me. It's okay, Derry. Look, if she <laughs> look, Derry's <laughs> going to yell at you in life sooner or later. So you might as just well get I it over with Gary now. Derry enough, but yes, I have. Um, I read all of the death books. Okay. 
They weren't for you, it looks like, based they were on the face. The, the, okay. The, the death parts of the death books are amazing. Okay. It's just when death wasn't on the page, I didn't really sure. care. Yeah. Um, and then I read two of the witches' books. Those weren't for me. Okay. And uh, I do have the, um, I have Going Postal, Monstrous Regiment, Small Gods, Pyramids, The Truth, and uh, I've got that sub-series up there that I still need to read. So did you read those before or after you did the City Watch? After. So, got it. So you were probably having some expectations that those were going to be, you know, pretty strong based on the strength of the City Watch. Yes. I see. Was it mostly characters? Because I can't believe that his writing style would be that different. Mm. Unless unless they're earlier. See, that's the thing about Discworld, is that I don't know the publication order off the top of my head. So, Color Magic's number one. Well, like that, I, that I know, because uh, plenty Dark of people Card know. Is number eight. I okay. Think. Um, and then so other most, than that, it, all, it all goes out the window. But, so, most of those other ones that were probably written after the City Watch. Yes. Um, so it's wild. Um, I think Terry Pratchett's a genius. 100%. His, yes. His use of theme and ideas, he can bury it under witticisms and stuff like that. But if you don't have, at least for this for me personally, I'm speaking to myself. If I don't mm-hmm. have a reference to the source material and I don't know what he's being witty about, I um, see. Which, the books are very British. I'm American. Yes. Yeah. Um, so some of it just went over my head. A lot of it, like, um, and Bob's your uncle books that has yeah. like soul, soul music or something like that. It's like seventies rock. Like I caught some of it. Sure. My, my education on seventies rock isn't complete. Sure. Well, and now you so, know who to call for your seventies rock knowledge. It, Cause the witches yeah. did some Shakespeare stuff. Okay. My Shakespeare days were in high school. Right. It, it just kind of, the subject matter didn't quite land for me because I didn't understand what was being riffed or what was being analyzed. Gotcha. Gotcha. Derry says, I'm going to love soul music because I'll get all the references. See, that's exactly perfect for me. That's why I like Nicholas Eames, the band series so much is because I feel like it was basically written for me. I mean, I grew up listening to, but even if you don't catch the references, it's still really good. It is really good. I can't wait for book three to come out. Do we know when that's coming out, by the way, has there been any, Mention I that. interviewed him like two years ago. Um, and it was Bloody Rose already out then? Yeah, it must have been. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I interviewed him with Kate the Literary Apothecary. And um, I think at that time he was still working on it. And I think we we got news that it should be in the next couple of years or something like that. Gotcha. Yeah. You know, I don't know. I mean, I guess every author has their own process. It's, it's strange though, how, how they kind of go in fits and spurts sometimes where he could do those first two books relatively quickly. And then a bit of a break as we've seen with some of the other authors that we've been waiting on indefinitely uh, for some time. So let me ask you this. And we just only got a few more questions because I promised Andrew, we were going to keep it to a tight 90 minutes tonight because he does have a family. What, if any, do you have any future goals for the channel? Like, did you, when you started the channel, did you have goals or do you have them now? Not really? No, I I had them and I threw them all out because that creates expectation and expectation is unhealthy. Expectation is unhealthy. Can you explain that a little bit to me? Because I've not heard that before. In my opinion, so like the same with books. If I go in, we're we're talking about Discworld. I went in with an expectation. Sure. And I didn't like the books. Okay. I had an expectation that something was going to be a certain way. Right. And an outcome. I was let down. Yeah. And as a result, I felt negative emotion from it. Sure. Uh, now, don't get me wrong. If you have expectations of your friends to be there for you, that's fine. I'm not talking. Right. But like, if I expect to hit 10,000 subscribers in the next three weeks and it doesn't happen. Sure. I see what I you mean. All I got blame is... The I see what you mean. Myself, and it's not fair. And uh, I want to refra- I want to rephrase my question because I think the question I could have phrased it better. Are there goals that are within your control that you have for the channel? Because mm-hmm. things like views or subscribers or any of that is is you know that that's you make your content and whatever happens happens. But 
do you have like certain things that you, you've had in mind that you want to do? No. Or are you are you already doing them? I'm I'm pretty much already doing it. I've got my friends. I know who they are. I, I love making new friends. Um, Very cool. I'm always open to, to making new friends and and reading new books and stuff like that. But honestly, like if the channel continues to grow, that's great. Uh, a couple months ago, I hit I hit just a weird low point where I was slumping and I just nothing was working for me. And I, I was just I was very, very frustrated. And I had to just basically like I had thoughts that things were going to be a certain way if I would dump out a video and it would uh, be, you know, it would get 100 views. And mm -hmm. I'm like, why did that get 100 views when it should have gotten at least 300? And then mm -hmm. I wasn't hitting certain milestones and I, I, I got focused on the numbers and stuff like that. And honestly, like I would like to come back to live shows, but, mm -hmm. you know, I do have two small kids. I, right. My, my, when you do a live show with a, with a very young family, I'm essentially putting all that responsibility on my partner, on my right. wife. Yep. And that's not exactly fair. Right. Um, and so it's just, I don't know. It, it, it is what it is right now. I'm just kind of flying by the seat of my pants. I'd like to do live shows. I like doing collaborations. I would love to do panel things. Sure. Stuff like that. But that comes as it comes. That's in the moment kind of stuff that I can commit to and do on the channel. But really it's just going to be what it is right now. I, well, I don't have any expectations anymore of other than, I hope people continue to watch my stuff. I think and they're if going they don't, to. They tell me why. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> to, brutal honesty. To, be brutally to make it honest better. You think I well, suck? Tell me. <laughs> well, speaking of brutal honesty, if if you could go back and talk to Andrew from three years, you know, from three years ago, as you're hitting that upload button for the first time, what advice would you give, you know, first time uploader Andrew with what you know now? Be more discerning on what I want to read. Because I don't literally, I see the cover. I, I'm a cover buyer. That That's okay. a bad thing to be. Yeah. Because I can spend a lot of money on a sure. lot of books I don't like. Sure. I don't, I don't go on Amazon. I don't sample. I don't I do not do anything like that. I just, for the longest time, I would see Daniel Green be like, oh, this book is amazing. And it took me spending $100 on five books to realize Maybe our tastes don't quite fully align. I mean, we've got some overlap, obviously, right? But um, I, I did that with numerous other creators, and I, I wish I had me personally sampled the books that were being recommended. That... Try them first. Try a page because Amazon literally lets you read like a page or two. Yeah, I mean, and I think, like you've said, you're pretty good at sussing out relatively quickly if the book is going to be for you or not. I think you know your own taste pretty well at this point, and you're not afraid to move on to something else, especially if you're going to do the first couple of pages of several books. One of mm -hmm. them is more likely to hit than the others for you, and that's where you go. So the judging a book by its cover, you know, added old adage kind of comes back there and I, well, I, it's made to make you pick up the book and right. say, ooh, shiny and pretty. Right. It doesn't necessarily mean that the words inside of the cover it's, are going to work it, for me. It blows me away how how Greenbone Saga, you know, the word of mouth of it basically sold that series. It's one of my mm -hmm. all-time favorite series, but my God, those covers. I mean, they're, I don't get it. But, hey, it worked. So going to do a couple of quick housekeeping things as we as we start to wrap up here and then we're going to do what we always do here. Uh, I want to let everybody know next week we do have another guest. It's going to be at 7 p.m. Eastern time, 6 p.m. Central time, 4 p.m. Pacific time. Wherever Bryce lives, I think it's 5% 5 p.m. your time in the mountains. I don't know. No, he's been on before. But I always give him some some crap because I never get mountain time correct. But our guest actually next week is somebody that I'm pretty fired up to talk to. I've read two of his books already. He is an author that I just love. I suspect Andrew knows him probably personally. And that is J.C.M. Byrne, otherwise known as Joe Byrne, is going to be our guest next week on For Whom the Bell Tolls. Joe, you officially have one week to prepare. Exactly. The, the author of the hybrid helix. It's so good. We're going to talk about those books next week. We're going to talk, we're going to have a blast because 
yeah, Joe's just, Joe's a dude, um, for sure. So I am very, very happy he accepted my invitation to come on next week. And just, of course, you know, if you did like what you see here and you're watching on replay, if you haven't yet subscribed, it wouldn't kill you to hit the subscribe button. You know, do me a solid. I'd super appreciate that. And like I mentioned earlier, if you could leave a comment, if you're watching on replay, let me know where you are, when you are, and hopefully we can try to get some, you know, other streams scheduled at times that are convenient for the whole Belt Hoop community. So as most most of you know, that are, and obviously, Yeevee, duh, obviously <laughs> subscribe to Andrew. I think everybody who's watching me at all is probably subscribed to Andrew, but just in case you're not, his channel is already linked in the description box below. So I took care of that way ahead of time. And as my my bromance brother, my $10 from another mother, it <laughs> feels good. <laughs> I love that guy. Anyway, so as we do on every episode of Bell 2, we have a segment called One for the Road, where we try to give some thoughts that might help some folks just kind of wherever they are in life. And sometimes it's just, you know, pretty basic stuff. Sometimes it can be complicated, but on For Whom the Bell Tolls, I turn that role over to the guest. So, Andrew, if you wouldn't mind sending us out tonight with your personal one for the road today. Um, the, the urge to be silly is very strong, but my one for the road is just love your friends and read good books. Well, I don't think it gets any easier than that, right? I mean, loving your friends, it, that like John just said, it feels good, right? I mean, yeah, it feels good. It, Friendship gets you through a lot of hardship. It really does. And I think for those of you who are watching this, whether you are a YouTuber, booktuber or not, it doesn't matter. There's avenues for you to have these friendships, right? In the community sections, mm -hmm. in the different discords, you're going to find found family, which is such a theme in all these books that we love so much. Um, you know, it's it's here for you. So again, if, if you happen to have caught this video and you, that somehow it showed up on your thing and you want kind of a found family and some of the, you know, that you find in these books, find some of these booktubers that come on this show like Andrew, because I really try to bring on people that I think add value, not only to my channel, but more importantly to anybody who's watching this. And I think Andrew, it's been a, blast having you on. It's something that I've, you've been a guest I've wanted to have since I thought about doing these live streams because you are so personable and you have some charisma. And as the comments are saying, you stay magical, which, you know, is just your deal. You are the wizard of booktube. And I want to thank everybody who's been here with us in the chat tonight. You guys are amazing. Thank you for anybody who's watching on replay. For Whom the Bell Tolls, we'll be back next week. I look forward to having great content with all of you guys. I look forward to meeting more booktubers. Andrew, you rock. Thank you so much for coming on tonight. And we will see you next week in the next episode. Thanks for having me. You got it. Always. <laughs>